one. We have gone live. At least I think we've gone live. It says preview still. I think it just, just go. I can't tell. I can't tell. Yes. Yes. We are live. Okay. We wanted to double check. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. We're recording. We're going live. We're live for the new Geek Show. And BJ's right there in the studio. You can't see uh, He can't see himself right now. I can't. Unless he goes to his phone and checks. I but could. It's, it's, a little, it's a little delayed. But otherwise, yeah, you'll see it. Let's see. Yeah, there I am. There you are. Hi, everybody. Okay. Rock and roll. Yeah, your audio... Uh, no, no, I'm not even going to worry about it right now. Okay. okay. Anyway. Okay, so we're ready. Let's see. Geek Show. There we go. Okay, here we go. Another name you might know me by. Star. Uh, my name is Oliver Queen. You'll be hearing from us. From the strategic homeland. Just call us shield. Beware my power. Green Lantern's light. And here we go. Excelsior! Oh, how good it feels to be back. Yes. It has been quite a while since you've heard from us. My name is BJ, and across from me, as usual... The one and only, the champion of the world. Howdy, Big Rich, yeah. Big Rich in the house, in <laughs> his house. My house. And we are once again recording episode number 44 of the Geek Show. We were going right along and we got uh, the tiniest bit derailed. A little bit. <laughs> there, was a, there was an issue where um, you knocked up your wife. I know, that happened. It happened. And, Those uh, kinds of things do happen in do. real life. They yes. do. When you're married, things like that happen sometimes. So. Yeah. There you go. And even when you're not married, sometimes. Yeah. So, but how? How? So you had? So you had a baby? Yes. Um, tell us a little bit more about the baby, like you know, all that kind of, thing. all the, all the, all the little details yeah, all that everybody likes to know. Well, y- yes. Uh, Logan Ragone was brought into this world uh, July 31st uh, by C-section. Oh wow! And uh, you know, so that was a little, that was a little crazy for a little while because I had to kind of take care of a newborn and take care of my wife because you know they don't tell you when you. When you get a C-section, you're getting major abdominal surgery. You're not going to be able to move around right away or anything. So that was yeah, a little it's tough. Not a, it's not a not an easy right. thing to get by. No, no. It was really hard on her. So, you know, we were taking care of her. And then, you know, both of us trying to take care of the baby. And, of course, you know, she didn't want to not take care of the baby. Right, so it was a right. little bit of me telling her, you know what, you need to relax right now. Yep. Let me run this for a little bit and everything. Yeah. But now here we are uh, two months later. He's two months old now. And. I'm able to get back out and stretch my legs again, and uh, she is fully capable of being able to do everything that she wants to do again now, which I is still um, on maternity leave from work too. Um, okay. So yeah. And you just did a you just did a 5K run this past. Yeah, uh, I was I saw the picture. I was busy this weekend. Uh, Saturday, um, I did the 5K run uh, with some of my coworkers, and then also with uh, my brother and sister in law. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a lot of fun, uh, as much fun as a uh, run can be. Right. And uh, well, I have fun doing it. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> yeah, um, me, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be like some of the people that I see there that were like, why, why did I sign up for this thing again? I'm too fat for that kind of crap. <laughs> you can do it. You'll do it someday. <laughs> I all right. You know what? Let's let's do this. Yeah. New year, I will train Kim. Well, Kim, Kim has already done the five k part of the boiler maker out in Utica. Well, the boiler maker is a tough one. Yeah, that's I mean that the full the full boiler maker is tough. Is a, the boiler maker a half marathon? I or is that a f- I think it's a full. That's the full marathon. I think it's a full. Okay, I don't know. I I I'm I'm not a runner so I don't know. I I do know that she did the 5k a couple of years ago before Catherine, our youngest was just was born. Right. Uh and Catherine's 16 months. Now. Mm-hmm. So, um you do, you guys do the math. Uh, but yeah, let's do this. New Year's resolution. Okay. I will. I will start. I will train to run a 5K with you. Okay. At some point. Okay. In in 2017. Okay. There is some. There's some good ones that I can point in the right direction, and okay. ones that won't kill you. Right. Um. That'll be just like fun for you to get out and do. And I suggest doing them either 
in the spring or in the fall because the summer ones, it's just so they, they, hot. Yeah, it's got to be like yeah. sweat pouring down right. there. I, and I, I was thinking I'd rather do, I, I'm thinking probably fall. I like fall. Mm -hmm. So let, let's shoot for fall 2017. Right. You and I do a 5K. All right. We yeah. can do the Susan G. Komen one that I just did. The Race for the Cure. It's for a good cause. Yeah. You know, it's all, it's for all right. Good stuff. So we got it. So yeah. Susan G. Komen, Race for the Cure, 5K. 2017. 2017, autumn. We're you and me. All right. Team X job. And we're going to save, and we're gonna save this audio so that when I say to Rich, September <laughs> 1st of 2017, yeah. Hey, hey, have you been run, have you been signed up for this yet? And he goes, "Oh crap!" Yeah, <laughs> I'll be the I can be reminded. No, I'll tell. I'll actually. I'll tell Kim, yeah. and then Kim will remind me. She will. She will make sure to tell me that. Uh, hey, you got to do this, and she'll. She'll also get on my butt too. She'll keep. Just. She'll keep, have you worked out? Have you ran, ran? Have you been keeping up with what you're supposed to be doing? And, and you'll like, feel. You know what? And you'll feel good doing it because I mean, I wasn't a. I wasn't a runner. I used to do yeah. track and I did cross country in high school. And then I got way away from it and yeah. just, like, really enjoyed drinking beer and oh, eating pizza. Yeah. You know, what, what you All do. All the stuff I like doing, too. Right. So. And, I, and I lost a lot of weight. When I had that abscess tooth and I was in the hospital around Easter, I lost, like, 20-something pounds. That happened. So, yeah. And um, I, I want to keep it off. Oh, and I saw the other day you went for, like, a three-mile walk, too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a long walk. That's a that's a good walk. That's what you know. I mean, you go for walks all the time. Yeah. I mean, we... we I, if you I, follow Rich on Facebook, you Facebook live some of them, and you can live yeah. vicariously through Rich. Live vicariously. I, I, I take the daughter, you know, the youngest, Catherine. Yep. We put her in... I, I put her in, or my wife puts her in the uh, the stroller, and we just, you know, we just walk around the neighborhood. And I, mm -hmm. every now and again, I'll, you know, throw a picture up on my Facebook page, or I'll just do a quick little short video or something, just, yeah. just for fun, just to have something up there. You know, it's funny, before we had the baby and everything, I was like, oh, I'll, I'm never going to be one of those people that posts about their baby all the time. And I feel like that's all I've been posting about lately. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and I feel like everybody must say that. They're like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to post about it all the time. And then that's all, I mean, because it's changed. It's totally life changing. You can't, you can't help it. It's, it's just, you know, your dad, you, you know, when you're a parent and mm -hmm. you've got, you know, this, this kid. You just, you just, you want to, you want to show the world, you know, you want to be like that otter in that meme. I made this. Right, exactly. That's, that's what it's all about. I right. mean. And they do funny, stupid things and you want to share that out exactly. too. Exactly. You know. Exactly. They'll say and do weird things like, right. the, like the other night, uh, Kim didn't remember where she had her phone. She put her iPhone down somewhere and she couldn't remember where it was. Yeah. Catherine was in the bedroom just sitting on the floor kind of playing and. You know, 16 months old, she doesn't have a very big vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, she's looking around just playfully. She looks at Catherine and says, Catherine, is my phone in there? And Kath and she thought she heard Catherine say, it's in here. <laughs> she, the way she, she made a little noise and it sounded like it's here. That's funny. And she went in and there it was. That's funny. That's, that, that's kind of funny. You know what else is funny? What? Uh, we actually have a lot of uh, geeky stuff to talk about. Yeah. And uh, we really should get to it. Like, we I'm, should. Like, you know, like the fact that I asked you to bring bring me an energy drink because everybody needs to have an energy drink. Yeah. Um, if you're I looking have, at the live video right mine. now on Facebook, because uh, we are doing this live we have, video. We each have one. Yep. Uh, uh, BJ was kind of nice and uh, decided to uh, get me one. I forgot to start the recording for the video, but we got audio anyway. So <laughs> we'll put it up on, we'll put it up on uh, YouTube next time. But actually, we can embed this on, I think. Probably. On the website. So right. I'll. But anyway, um, yeah, so BJ was coming over, and I asked him, hey, could you stop and get me one of those Stewart's Impact Energy Drinks? That's what I drink. For those of you who are listening from not in upstate New York, yeah. we have a great place called Stewart's here. It's and, kind of like know, our 7-Eleven. Right, and, you know, some of them, like 7-Elevens, are gross, and some of them are very, very nice. Yes. And, uh, you know, the one down the street from you is awesome. They redid it, and it's just it's a, it's fantastic. It's like a brand new one, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but they make all their own products. They use farm fresh uh, milk and, yep. and eggs and stuff like that, all from local places. And he asked me, you know, can you stop and give me one of those Stewart's Impact drinks? Well, I'm I'm in Walmart buying <laughs> formula and stuff. And I was like, would you like something that's not that? Because I can get you literally any other energy drink on the planet right now. And he's like, uh, I don't know. And I was like, what about? <laughs> and so I'm going through the list. And I said, what about Rockstar Energy Drink? And he goes, uh, I don't know. I've never had one of those. What about I'm, Red Bull? Yeah. What about Amp? Like Monster? Anything? And so finally, we got out of him that he would like a 
cherry flavored amp which i couldn't yeah. find because it's very specific <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, I, in my defense i said if you can't find that yeah whatever else is cool i'm cool with as it. long as i get caffeine in my body i'm fine with whatever it is just br- bring me some caffeine pills yeah. an injection I, you know? I, I i've been extra geeky today because we're here in, you can't see it in the studio right now but i've i've actually gone and done a whole crap load of other stuff uh, plus, I, I mowed the lawn today. Mm-hmm. I uh, did that. I uh, dug out a computer that I got for free from a friend, uh, and I have set that up because I am setting up my old my old school Telnet BBS bulletin board system. If you go check out one of the Geek Cave uh, videos on my YouTube page, you can you can hear about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was setting that up, and I was doing some a couple of other things, or, you know, around the house. So. I need I need something. You need a little something to get I, you I going. I need a little pick me up. Yeah. Right. So don't get on my case about <laughs> it, unless you really want to see me cranky. Hey, you know what? I I needed one too. Yeah. You know. I mean, when you have when, when you have a kid. Yeah. These guys actually become your your the. I mean, you've heard of mother's little helper. Yeah. These are daddy's little helper. Yeah. And I don't know about Vera, but Kim partakes in a glass of wine every now and again. She was so happy when she was done breastfeeding, <laughs> be, so she could start having wine again. Yeah, I don't know. Is is I mean, is are is Vera breastfeeding? Uh, Logan? we're we're doing bottle feeding. You're doing bottle feeding, not for lack of trying. But okay, bottle feeding is the way we decided to go. Yeah. Um, and Vera was very excited to be able to have a glass of chilled reasoning there you go that. <laughs> there you go see the yeah mama's little helper right, right yeah there. i believe the first thing that she had we went out to brunch um probably maybe when he was a month old we like went a out. mimosa yeah she had a mimosa she was like this is the first drink i've had <laughs> and i feel a little bit buzzed right there now. you go it's the first drink in i mean months months yeah. and months and months so uh well, yeah. she went out with, like, a champ, though, because we went to a wedding right before we found out. Yeah. And we closed that place down. So Oh. There we go. And then we found out, and Vera was like, oh, my God, I hope that I didn't do any damage <laughs> to this baby. And I was like, listen, you're fine. Don't your, worry your about body's it. body's very resilient. Yeah, and it was good. Babies are very resilient. One drink is not going to. No. You know. Well, they they even say when you are breastfeeding, one drink might do it. I'm a little too cautious for that, yeah. but you know, some you know, yeah, well, there you go. You know, I mean, some people smoke crack when they're pregnant. You know, who are we to judge? <laughs> uh, not going. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. So let's take a look. So we got our list here. We got yeah. our, we 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 didn't we didn't type them out or anything. Usually we do that, but uh, so we put them on our iPhones. Right. Uh, okay. So first up, Justice League movie has has reportedly wrapped. Filming. Yeah. Jason Momoa posted a uh, little teaser saying that they were done. They yeah. had wrapped their filming in London. Um, so that is coming down the pipe very, very quickly. Right. Um, you know, I feel like we just got to see Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Over the summer, the ultimate cut was released, which I will say is the better film than the theatrical release. Still, right. still needed a little bit more work, a little bit too much cramming for my taste. But, yeah. you know, it was overall when I watched the ultimate cut of it, not bad. So if we're going to get a story like that for Justice League, which already seems like it's going to be way more fun, which yeah. I think is something that has really, really missing from the DC Cinematic yeah. Universe, yeah. is fun. Yeah. And um, it's a little too somber for me. Well, you know, so you got Jeff Johns, who is now like basically overseeing all these projects. Yeah, okay? and he's he's got. A, I think he's got a little bit right. more, you know, a sense of humor than than Zack Snyder had right. the last couple movies. Well, and I mean, and any of you who read the comics know that the New Fifty Two that DC had done was very doom and gloom. It was very, you know, disaster. You know, the the stuff was very good. I I enjoyed the Justice League of America stuff, the yeah. Batman stuff that. Uh, Snyder and Caputo were doing are was awesome. Um, some of the Superman stuff was bad too. Um, you know the Trinity War, um, the Dark Side War. Um, you know I, I liked a lot of it that was going on. But then now they did Rebirth at the end of the, or yeah the middle of the summer. So now they have decided to go in and course correct from all the doom and gloom that was the New Fifty Two that had been around since I think two thousand and twelve, and get back to what was missing from the Justice League comic book universe which was hope and love and all this other stuff and the whole key to that was wally west uh being brought back into it and reintroducing to barry allen you know Mm -hmm. you know you you're my uncle like you showed me all of this stuff and you know we need to get back to it so um the the first few issues that i read of dc rebirth 
is a lot more fun. Um, yeah. Green Arrow is a lot more fun. Batman is a lot more fun. Um, I really enjoyed The Flash mm-hmm. and everything, and I think that's what we're going to get in the movies now. So I'm hoping that's the way it goes. But i got to tell you, Jason Momoa's Aquaman looks badass as hell. Oh, he, he's, he's looked badass ever since the, the you know he was announced, and they, they, yeah. they tweeted that first picture of him. No, I saw someplace else that they said that he's basically going to be like the cinematic universe uh, for DC. He's going to be like their Wolverine. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Oh, that's that's a whole different thing then. Right. So you're taking Aquaman, who used to swim around on a seahorse, <laughs> and turning him into Wolverine. What, what was it that Raj on Biz, Big Bang said? Aquaman sucks. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's funny because Aquaman doesn't suck. Um, he doesn't. If there's you, a lot of great stories about him. Yeah, if you look up all of his, you know, what he can do and all that. I yeah. mean, there's even a Facebook meme going around about it somewhere. I mean, he can do a shit ton of stuff. Right. No, I just talked about the New 52, but the New 52 Aquaman is awesome. Just read Throne of Atlantis or watch the DC uh, movie about it in their animated universe, Throne of Atlantis. That was a good so, movie. So, so good. That was a really Great good Aquaman movie. story. Yes, yes. Um, so, I mean, and Aquaman, I mean, he is powerful. The, the Atlanteans are powerful people yeah. in the DC world. So, I mean, I wouldn't want to screw with him. He catches a bad rap, and mostly I think that's because of Super Friends. Uh, oh, you know what okay, I mean? Yeah. When you think about the Super yeah. Friends and how corny that was back then, I mean, I loved it when I was a kid. Right. You know, and there are parts of it that's you know, I still love about it now, but I think that's where he gets most of the bad reputation was from those little cartoons with Aqualad and stuff like that. So. Yeah, those, those kinds of things. Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, they, I mean, they redeemed Aqualad, too, on... You know, for me in Young Justice, um, did you ever watch the Young Justice? No, I've show? seen I've seen oh. clips on YouTube. I really, I think I do want to watch that. If they were to ever do a live action Teen Titans, I think that they should borrow exactly from Young Justice because that cartoon, to me, I don't think it's technically in the DC animated universe. Um, I don't Not think so. Sure. I don't think so either because no. it doesn't seem to fit with anything. No, the the animation and everything like that, but the, the characters are great, you know, Ms. Martian and then you know you have Robin who eventually becomes Nightwing in yep. the show yep. um because they advance it and everything. The just like the and the dynamic between the like the the Young Justice squad because I don't think they call they don't call them Titans on the show, but the Young Justice squad and their interactions with the Justice League and everything like that. So it's just really cool. If they were to ever do a movie or something, I would yeah. love for them to just borrow it. And that, that is on Netflix, I know. Oh, yeah. I've seen it on Netflix. So that's it. So if you have Netflix, it's definitely worth the watch, I would say. And that. I've heard that they're working on doing a season three on Netflix because it's only two seasons. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw that somewhere where they people were very happy to, to have that because they wanted it. It would continue. be awesome. Yeah. But that's where I think that they really, they redeemed Aqualad in that and, and turned him into Cal- Calderon. And, uh, you know, it was just it was just awesome. Oh, cool. I, I love that a lot. Is, not, is you know, Will Wheaton doing the voice of Aqualad in that? Because he was original. Because <laughs> he was, you know, Aqualad in the Teen Titans cartoon. He did not. Okay. So there you go. Sorry, Will. Sorry, Will. <laughs> All right. So moving on uh, in the DC universe, we yeah. um, the word is now that Cyborg will be in the solo Flash movie, mm-hmm. but Cy- Cyborg is not going to get. Did you say Cyborg was not going to get his own yeah. movie? Yeah, from everything that I've been reading, um, you know, from Heroic Hollywood and superhero hype and stuff yep. like that, you know, they're kind of moving away from a Cyborg solo film, which mm-hmm. I think is good because I like Cyborg as a character. I think that he's really um, important for this day and age right. as, like, somebody that's technology-based. Yep. Um, and, you know, he was one of my favorite characters. I really enjoyed Cyborg after Flashpoint. Um, Flashpoint really got me more into Cyborg as a character. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's really cool that they're going to kind of turn him into a kind of like buddy guy with the Flash. Right. Um, which would be interesting because then, again, you're adding the whole, you know, fun yeah. and hopefulness and yeah. thing like that into the DC movies. Yeah. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know if you saw it or not yet, but the, the uh, Flash made the tiniest, tiniest cameo in Suicide Squad. And I did not. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I'd miss that. Okay, you know what? I got to go back. Did you see Suicide Squad? Most of it. <laughs> I, um, I won't say how most of it was seen, but I, uh, most of it. I ended up going, I went to the theater and saw it. It was okay. You know, it was, to me, it was 
better than Batman versus Superman. I didn't love it the way I thought I was going to love it. Yeah. Some of it was kind of uh, forced, and it definitely felt like there were a lot of cooks in that kitchen. Yeah. Fortunately, they were able to save it a little bit. Hated the way that they brought the villain into it. I thought that was really lame. Um, you know, but DC, as we've said many times on this yeah. show, is playing catch up with Marvel. Marvel, so you have to establish all of these villains all at once. Which overall, I mean, what did you? Th- I mean, I didn't hate Will Smith. I didn't hate him either. No. I thought he was quite good. And Margot Robbie stole the show. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was pretty much pre-designed, right? By right. Them, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, for with what I saw, I, I didn't hate it. It, mm-hmm. it. I mean, there there was. Let me put it. There was room for improvement, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. It wasn't something where I was. I would be disappointed seeing again. I, right. I. I would go. I would go see it again. I would see it again. Yeah, but yeah, and no, and the when they're doing the the background information on Captain Boomerang. Yeah, there's the tiniest little flash cameo where he's the one who actually is the one who ends up sending him um, to prison, which is where they end up assembling this team from. Okay. So I will. All right. I will have to to. Uh, find that and go from there. Yeah. Um, But that will be, you know, just his dynamic in that shows me that this Flash movie is going to be very similar to what we like on television. Yeah. It's going to be a fun Barry Allen, which I think is a good thing because the Flash, to me, should be a fun character. Yes. You know what I mean? He has to be a fun character. Um, And Ezra Miller looks like he's going to be doing really well in it. If you've seen the Justice League trailer, you already know that he's he's going to be the light part of the team. Yeah. but it'll be good if he has some heavy parts. Too. He's going to almost be the comic relief. Yeah, he's going to be break that tension, yeah. which is, which is is good. I, I that's because that's something that the DC movie universe desperately oh, desperately yeah. needed. So bad, um, so so bad. But I'm looking forward to that. If they're going to have him be in the Flash movie, I think that's going to be really good. Um, and I think the fact that they're going to skip out on the Cyborg movie is good. I'm still, you know, there's so many rumors and things going around about the DC Cinematic Universe. Like, I saw the other day that Alan Richson, who, um, he has played um, Raphael in the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboots by uh, Michael Bay. Um, he played Aquaman on Smallville, okay? He's a former oh, model. okay, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Now, I saw that he tweeted out the other, uh, probably a couple weeks ago now, he tweeted out that he was going to be playing Shazam, okay? He what? was going to play Captain Marvel. Um, now, I could see that because of he's got a very young look to him. Yep. He's got a playfulness. Yep. Um, if you watched um, the show I Can Do That on NBC last summer, mm-hmm. a, a stupid show where celebrities try to do these stupid things from, like, you know, America's Got Talent and everything. Right. But he was really, he was really fun in it. And I think that you have to have a gigantic muscle-bound man that can also look like he's having fun because Shazam is a kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Billy Batson is a... Ch- is he, he's, a he's like... What is he supposed he's, to be like? He's like, supposed to be like 13 yeah. or something, 12 or 13. So, I mean, he's he's just a kid, you know? You know, he goes from, you know, riding a bicycle to having the power of all these Greek gods and everything like that. So that'll be an interesting thing if that is true. There's been no confirmation of it yeah. that I've seen. Um, the only thing we know about Shazam is that The Rock is in it. Um, yeah, he and, plays Black Adam. Right, and that it ha- it's not going to have any ties, supposedly, to the DC Cinematic Universe. And this rumor of a Booster Gold and Blue Beetle movie. Oh, please. Which isn't going to also have ties to the DC Cinematic Universe either. I say, don't know if I need a Booster Gold Blue Beetle movie. I don't think that that's going to bring in a ton of money. If, if they can make it a buddy comedy, I think yeah. it can do it. If it can do it like the old, uh, you know, Justice League comic books from back in the late '80s, early '90s, mm-hmm. um, that's 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 the way to do it. I think it would be a better television show. It might be. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I just think it's going to be a lot to like bring in and explain who Booster Gold is and his yeah. whole backstory. Yeah. And Blue Beetle at the same time and just kind of throw it there. Oh, there are two guys together. He, one's from the future and this guy is this. And, you know, what version of Blue Beetle are we going to do? And, I, I'm hoping it's know? the non-alien armor one. I whatever. do, too. That's that. That's the funny one, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, just because those two guys together were just... I mean, the way it, it, it played out like a buddy. It was a buddy action comic book. Wouldn't you love hilarious. to see? Wouldn't you love to see that more on a weekly basis on television, though? I think I would shot? because you, they could just 
I mean, they're they're like the they're, they're like the second tier. They're like the B level heroes. They really are. And they they just you know and they try to, they're trying to make it to the top level. They're trying to be up there with Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all of those, the yeah. Flash, Martian Manhunter, and all that. And they just can't quite get it. They there's always something that just screw just throws them off track, yeah. and they're trying to catch up every single time. I think that would be hilarious to yeah. see that kind of stuff. In my opinion, really. well, there would definitely be if if it isn't involved in the DC Cinematic Universe, that's just a travesty, because I would love to. Wouldn't you love to see a, a Booster Gold and Blue Beetle with the way that Ben Affleck uh, pay, played Batman? Wouldn't you love to see them with him or that with would, Henry Cavill? I, I would like to see them as. I mean, I I want it to take place in the DC Universe, DC Cinematic Universe, but not actually, you know, have any kind of contribute contribution to it yeah because that i mean because that just makes it you know here's you know here's you know i i doubt they could get affleck or cavill or godot to to do a mm -hmm. cameo on the show but i think it would be really funny if they said yeah we'll we'll you know we'll do a quick walk on yeah for you know and, and that but that would be so hilarious it's it's all taking place in the same universe but these guys it's the lighter side and these guys are just total screw ups mm -hmm. you know as heroes but they always you know but they you know they seem to pull it out of the fire but it's always enough to just keep them one you know it's it's well i'm two broke girls comes to mind i don't know why <laughs> i don't you know, know why either. i don't know why that never comes to my mind i i don't <laughs> i don't know maybe because i like cat denning i don't I know i would uh i think it would be really cool if you see like in this justice league movie the rumored villain is steppenwolf which you got from that deleted scene in uh, Batman vs. Superman where Lex is communicating within the Kryptonian ship and everything. So you say you've got Steppenwolf is there. He's a new god, and the Justice League is just battling him. Like, it's just yeah. it's craziness. Yeah. And then off to the side, you have this separate movie that comes out. It starts out showing the Justice League battling Steppenwolf, right. but then you've got Booster Gold and Blue Beetle are also... You know, they're taking on a big threat, but at the end of the day, yeah. no one's going to remember they did anything. Right. Because, it's, like, yeah. it, it's like in the cartoon where uh, the, the animated Justice League Unlimited, yeah. where they were like, Booster, you're on crowd control. I know. You know, that kind of stuff. Right. You know, and he's like, come this way, right. over here, this way to safety. Right. You know, walk, walk quickly, don't run, don't trample anybody, yeah. that kind of thing. Um, okay, so let's switch. All right, let's go to the other side of the street. Yeah. For uh, Marvel news. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for it's it's fall now. Uh, new seasons of the Marvel shows. Uh, you know, well, new, I should say Marvel. Well, there's Luke Cage. That's technically a show. Luke, yeah, Luke Cage dropped on fr just this past Friday. Yep. We're recording on the Monday, 30th. October yep. 3rd. Yep. So you've seen the first couple episodes. Yeah. I haven't gotten around to seeing it yet. It yeah. is on my plan. I'm probably going to watch an episode or two tonight. I just finished off another show on Netflix so mm -hmm. I'm I'm ready to go but what were your initial thoughts um so far it's it's not too bad um for me the Netflix shows start out really really slow like almost every single one of them starts out super duper slow and I don't know why that is but it just starts out like like barely walking and then they get to a power walk and then it's just a full on sprint for like the last few episodes like they skip the jogging phase totally and it's just literally like sprinting um and i don't know why we just don't start out jogging and then just get right to it because they're doing a really good job with them um no spoilers here about what's going on on luke cage or anything i'll tell you that i really really like mike coulter i think he's fantastic i really really like um i like cotton mouth as a villain i think that the guy is playing him is so good. The show is very violent. Uh, it's so well, violent. Well, what, what Marvel Netflix show is I not? Know, I know. It's so, know? I mean, but it is just the violence is so amped up and everything yeah. like that. Um, the language is amped up a little bit on it, too. Um, it's very... Um, it, it's a, Luke Cage, to me, right now, what I'm seeing is a very political show right that is really really telling the story of like what is happening in our world right now and they're doing a really good job of it um and it takes place after the events of jessica jones that's not any spoilers they said that right. that's when it would be happening so you know he is taking place after 
the events of being taken over by Kilgrave and, yeah. and all this other and stuff. Then, and I had read an article t- just today about how, yeah, they were making it very contemporary, Black Lives Movement, the whole, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, with, you know, people, you know, with African-American men just getting gunned down yeah. in the street, yeah. you know, by cops for, you know, whatever reason. I mean, it feels like I'm watching when I'm watching it. It feels like I'm watching a Spike Lee movie. That's yep. also a superhero show. Um, you know, it's very political. The tone is like, you know, you've got a little bit of that, like, uh, of like the seventies right. vibe to it with the music yep. and everything. Yep. And then you get yep. right into it and you got like that nineties hip hop vibe, yep. which I love. Cause, um, you know, I mean, Luke Cage started out as like a kind of, for me, it started out as like a weird comic book. Yeah. And everything. And in the 90s, he kind of got a little bit different. And, you know, he's always, you know, he's been kind of on the B team, the C team and everything. And this puts him in the forefront. And I just, I, I, I really like what they're doing. Second episode in, I, I'm really looking forward to what's next. All right. Well, I'll just, this is good because I'm going to definitely start it. And I want to, I definitely want to check it out. Yeah. So. Some cool stuff. Yeah. Um. All right. So moving on from. Luke Cage, uh, new season of Agents of Shield. Yes, sir. Ghost Rider. Yeah, is in. I haven't. Uh, I haven't managed to get caught up on that. Had a lot of stuff on my plate lately. But you, you're caught up on Agents of Shield. Totally caught up on Agents of Shield. Um, it is definitely a different show. Um, they moved it to that ten o'clock time slot. Yeah. Um, which when we were talking about it, we thought that that would be. We thought that that would be a little bit different in tone. Yeah. And it is. It's a little darker. Some of the stuff yeah. on it is definitely um, my my biggest comparison for the tonal change on it is think about if you were a fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer uh-huh. when it went from the WB over to UPN. Things got a little bit more intense and a little bit more crazy. Um, I like the way that they've gone with Sky. Um, Coulson and team have been broken up. Um, there's a new S.H.I.E.L.D. director, which we found out at the end of last season. We're just starting to learn who the new S.H.I.E.L.D. director is now. I think it's a really cool twist, by the way. Um, Ghost Rider. Oh, my God. I am not familiar with this version of Ghost Rider. It is the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider, which first appeared in comics yeah. in 2014. So I it's still... No clue on that one. It's very new. Yeah. Because we're used to Johnny Blaze, yep. which started in like the 70s, I believe. Yep. Um, and or we uh, the Danny Ketch version, which is my Ghost Rider from the nineties. Yeah. Um. God, I love that version. Like the, all the the spikes on the on the co yeah. and the chain and the flaming motorcycle and everything. And Robbie Reyes is totally different because he drives a car. Yeah. You know, it's the Hell Charger. It's a Dodge Charger, and it's a badass car. You know, if you're a car <laughs> if you're a car geek, you're gonna love Ghost Rider's car. Um, so far, what I've seen in the visual effects too is they've done a decent job with that as well. Um, and you know, he's done some fighting against some of our favorite characters so far. You know, we don't really know where he stands. We don't know whose side he's on. We know the only thing that Ghost Rider does, which is the same thing Ghost yep. Rider always did in the comic books, is he punishes people who deserve to be punished. Um, you know, and yep. he's kind of like the Punisher. You know, he's not. Yep. He's not. It. it yeah, I mean, he doesn't kill them, per right. se. I mean... No, no. Uh, but he, you know, the one of the worst things I think that Ghost Rider can do is that penance stare. Oh, jeez. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, you know, that's that just that's, does it to you. Yeah. And uh, so far, so good. I'm really looking forward to exploring more of Ghost Rider. I believe the actor who plays Robbie Reyes on the show mm-hmm. um, kind of hinted that Mephisto... Uh, he does exist within the Marvel Cinematic Ooh, Universe now. Ooh, okay. Which would be really cool because if you're a fan of the Infinity Gauntlet, if they could do what they did in Infinity Gauntlet where Mephisto was kind of manipulating Thanos into getting the glove and everything like that, and they could bring him into it. Um, but I, what they're doing on this season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is they've really, really leaned on the mystical stuff, which is going to play in nicely when Doctor Strange comes yeah. out in November. So that that's that's got to be their next push because they usually yeah. take the TV show and push it right. for the movies and all that. Like I mean, with with Civil War and right. Sokovia and and you know in the Avengers and all that kind right. of stuff. So yeah, that's yeah I can see that's definitely and with the ten o'clock times that's usually mm-hmm. where they put the dramas. I mean look like look at what NBC did with Law and Order, mm-hmm. you know Hill Street Blues, yeah, and why you know. Uh, NYPD Blue, the whole nine yards. I mean, it's it it is darker. It is more mature now. Yeah. Um, I like that. Um, 
it seems like a totally not a different show but it's just been reimagined as something that what i always thought it could be you know it's not quite to that tonal level of netflix but it's also not where it was first and second season yeah um you know because you got to look at the first season of shield i mean who was the, who were they battling they were battling themselves yep you know it was a you know man on man threat with hydra taking over yep you know and then in the second season, you're introduced to the Inhumans and the Kree and all this. And it's still a threat that people can take on. And now in this season, you know, you're introduced to um, you're introduced into the mystical stuff. And this is things that the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. haven't battled yet. Yeah. They don't know about it. And because we're just, I mean, it's existed forever in the comics. But it's not existed within the cinematic universe or the television universe. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. And now we're And now with Doctor Strange coming out i mean they're 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 releasing tv spots we're getting even closer i haven't even looked to see where we're at with that um yeah it's it's a good tie-in and because cumberbatch has has just confirmed that he is going to also be in the next avengers movie yeah so for infinity war or whatever they're going to call it right i know whatever it's going to be at this point. yeah avengers 3 we'll just say which yeah. technically civil war was kind of Avengers. That was two three. and a half. Two point yeah. five. Avengers two point five. Avengers better than Age of Ultron. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna Def- call it. Oh d- definitely. <laughs> so much better. Definitely. So um but yeah, so um that that you know that's something to look forward to and, and the way they're gonna tie everything in. I mean they keep saying that the T it's hard for them to tie the T V show into the movies. I think they're doing kind of an okay job with how they've been doing it right now. I mean mm-hmm. obviously you're not gonna see Cumberbatch show up on agents of shield right or anything like that but still i mean the way they they, they still make it part of the move of the of the of the cinematic universe yeah just by the references and how they tie it into all of that right. i i think they're doing an okay job with that i mean it'd be great if they could get you know somebody from one of the movies to come in well i mean they got lady sif yeah. Um, didn't they get Colby Smulders to come in? She was on the like I think the first or second episode of Agents of Shield when they were bringing Coulson back into the fold. Um, but she hasn't been on it since. I don't believe. Well, um, yeah, because she's working for the, like the CIA or something now, right? Something like that. Yeah. Um, they. I mean, but they've gotten. I mean, they've gotten Sam Jackson to come on a couple of times. Yeah. All the guys that are in the Avengers have said that if they wanted to, they would come on and they would do something. However, I think the price tag is a little too high for ABC's budget. It might be. So I don't know if we're going to get a Chris Evans or a Robert Downey Jr. or Chris right. Hemsworth to come on. It would also have to work into the story. And the way that I look at it, um, when you look at the MCU, is those stories, those are the major comic book events yes. and everything. Those are your annuals. Those are the gra- right? yeah the graphic novels, the yeah. annuals, the, the, the big right. honking things. The a- Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., that's your that's your monthlies, you know yeah. what I mean? Yep. But in this case, it's our weeklies until they go on break, and then yeah. we don't know what we do with ourselves. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> like I don't know about you, but over the summer, I was like, uh, I, I I scrambled you know, to find stuff, and there was and there's not very many like summer shows. What did you see? did you watch Stranger Things? Oh, of course I did. Now that show was of amazing. course that, that was, was a, awesome. The, the Upside Down, come yeah. on! That show was that that show. I, I said to Vera. And it was right before she was about to go in uh, to yep. give birth. Okay, I said, "Hey, let's let's check out this Stranger Things show. I see a lot of people talking about it." And she was like, "Um, okay, let's check it out." We watched one episode, and we were like, well, "Let's watch another episode." And then it got to the point where we we're staying up too late watching Stranger Things, coming home from work the next day to see what was next on Stranger Things. <laughs> and then you know, it's only eight episodes long, and it just took the whole world by storm. One of the podcasts that I listened to, they were like, how long before Marvel grabs these directors from Stranger Things to do one of their MCU films? Oh, yeah. You know? I could, I could see that happening. Wouldn't get, you love to see there. them on that? Like that would be awesome. That would be fantastic. I mean, it was very um, it was very Stephen King sci-fi meets Goonies, you yes. know? Yes. So was- who, what, I mean, just like going off the topic here, but like if the guys from Stranger Things could come in and do a Marvel movie, like what would you like them to do? I mean, we got Doctor oh, wow. Strange on. Yeah, what? A, man, I'm trying to think of a of like an '80s kind of thing. I'm I'm trying to go back in my head to yeah. the '80s comics. What would be awesome, like storylines or anything along those. Maybe like Secret Wars with the Beyonder. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be kind of cool. Or have them come in to do like the uh, 
the um, like Spider Man and the the symbiote and all that. Oh yeah, the symbiote saga. That mm-hmm. would be that would be cool. Oh, Maximum Carnage. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see them do that. That would be really cool. Um, you know, they're not calling it Infinity War at this point, but yeah. it would be cool to see their take since it's the upside down and everything. It would be yep. cool to see their take on right. you know, all these clones and everything like that. Yeah. Or hell, hell, have them come in and do uh, the Kree Skrull War or Secret oh, Invasion go. or something yeah. like that. That would be cool. That would be really awesome. Yeah. So um, also uh, in the Marvel News area, we've got uh, Feige has screened Civil War for the Motion Picture Academy. Yep for i guess to see if it could win something yeah i mean i don't see i I like civil war a lot i'm not seeing it winning any sort of best picture or you know best actor or actress or something like that but it could definitely do some stuff for cinematography um you know i actually wouldn't be shocked if the guy who uh if um uh, chadwick boseman Mm -hmm. i mean he could get a nod for a supporting role as black panther because he was, I mean, he was very, very good in that. And I would love, absolutely love to see him continue that role past Black Panther and right. beyond and everything. I didn't realize Chadwick Boseman's in his 40s, though. So he's right up there wow. with, with RDJ and everything. That. I right? did not know that. No, doesn't look it. Looks fantastic. Would yeah. love to, wouldn't we love to look that good? I know it's hard to. Say. I mean, people tell me I look I look young for my age. Oh so. yeah, no one no one in this in this world would guess what Rich's age is. No one, no <laughs> I, chance. I, I I'd show you my license, but right. I, I don't want you to know my address. You would never ever believe it in, in a million years. Yeah. The dude is youthful. <laughs> it's good Italian genes is what it is. First generation Italian American right here. It's, yeah, it's good. Go. It, it's good genes. It's the spaghetti sauce. <laughs> it's 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 a manani sauce. You know it's funny because I'm Italian too and. There's no chance in hell anybody would ever guess that I'm 30. You know, you d- you don't look you no. don't look it really. I mean, you actually look a lot. You look like you're in like your right. mid 20s. Exactly. Form. And I it's, when I was, tw- I mean, I'm still I still get carded at the store all, all the that's, time. That's good. And they look at it and they're like, oh, like sorry, like okay, like you've been drinking for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know why? Why? I mean, do you tell them don't be sorry? Come on, you just made you just made me feel better. Uh, I don't I don't care about any of that. Like I'm sure like some people. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too big on it either. So, but um, all right. So I mean that that I mean. Yeah, I guess cinematography, maybe something like that. You effects. know, costume design effects, that kind of thing yeah. would be good, but. Within that, he was also uh, doing some interviews and talking about how M- the MCU happened. And in 2008, they had you know gone on this journey with Robert Downey Jr. becoming Iron Man and the success of that. Um, and then that was followed up by you know Edward Norton's The Incredible Hulk and everything, which you know isn't isn't a bad movie. It, right. You know, and they finally figured out a way to make it fit into the MCU by bringing Thunderbolt Ross back into it for Civil War. Yeah. The references from Mark Ruffalo in the first Avengers movie when he says, last time I was in, you know, Harlem, it wasn't so good. Yeah, I and broke like Harlem that. and everything. Right. And then uh, in Daredevil, you know, you see some of the news articles on the reporter's yeah. wall where yeah. they're talking about... I'm Ben, I'm ben Yurik's wall. Right. You yeah, know, terror in Harlem and stuff yes. like that. Yeah, Because, yeah. you know, you had the Hulk um, and, uh, oh, shoot, what was, the, what was the villain's name? In that the abomination, the, uh, the abomination, uh, battling and just basically just destroying Harlem. Yeah. Um, but Kevin Feige has said that you know actually that version of the Incredible Hulk, you know, he wasn't exactly pleased or happy with that film. Um, and I think it was because Edward Norton had a lot of control of the character, and his version of the Hulk is very, very different yeah. than what Mark Ruffalo is portraying right now. What Mark Ruffalo is portraying as the Hulk is, I think what we really like about the Hulk. Yeah. Ben, or Ben, I'm sorry, Bruce Banner. I was going to say yeah. Ben Grimm. Ben, ben Grimm, okay. <laughs> ben Grimm is the Hulk. Uh, Bruce Banner is, he's, you know, a very smart guy, but he's, you know, he's vulnerable and everything. He doesn't love being the Hulk nope. and everything like that. And that's the whole thing with that character is the constant battle of him not wanting to become the Hulk and the Hulk not wanting to go back to being screw only banner, yeah. you know? So it's that Jekyll and Hyde type situation and yep. everything. Yeah. Um, and I think that Mark Ruffalo has done a great job with it so far. I, I think so too. Looking I, forward to seeing him in Ragnarok, by the way. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be great. And I'm seeing the, the, the early, uh, Comic-Con 
teaser that was that was released on YouTube and, and seeing. I mean, obviously the graphic, the, the the special effects and all that are not complete, you know, in that fit in that particular version. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I think what is going to be interesting about that too, because in Civil War, you know, one of the things that they said to uh, you know Thunderbolt Ross said to uh, Captain America was like, "Can you get me, you know, get me Bruce Banner right now? Get me Thor? Where are they? You know, you yeah. don't have any control of these guys who could destroy our planet." And that was one of the biggest yeah. themes of that movie and everything. Um, so we have no idea since Age of Ultron the whereabouts of Bruce Banner. Um, and one of the biggest theories I keep seeing online from fans is the fact that he's on a planet with the Grandmaster, mm-hmm. who is going to be played by Jeff Goldblum. Right. Um, and we're going to get the little bit of World War Hulk, or not World War Hulk, Planet Hulk. Planet Hulk. That we've wanted to see. Yep. You know, because we're never going to get, we're not going to get World War Hulk as much as that would be so awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not going to get World War Hulk because yeah. World War Hulk, I mean, the Illuminati sent banner into space because he was a danger ends up on the planet where he's got to fight like a gladiator and then comes back to wreak havoc on them all and was like yeah you shouldn't have kicked me out of here guys yeah we're not gonna see that nobody's kicked him out if nope. anything they're wondering where he is they yeah. want to know where is the hulk where is bruce banner yeah it's not gonna happen. thor is gonna find him um what was it the end of uh the dark world something like yeah where loki is parading around as uh he's pu- he's odin right he, he is took odin. O- he's he's he is pretending to be Odin. So where is Odin? You know, they've shown some scenes of Anthony Hopkins from this. He's on the streets looking like a homeless weirdo. Um, so I'm thinking that Loki has banished him to Earth. you got this old guy wander- wandering around talking about how he's Odin of Asgard and everything. So he's just going to look like another crazy person in New York City type yeah. thing. Um, in the And in the meantime, Thor is up there, discovers the plot. Poof! Sends him away to this world where he yep. has the battle, and that's where he finds Thor. Or, I'm sorry, the Hulk. I had a good exclamation point on that and everything. I <laughs> you didn't it quite, quite It get, didn't follow through. Didn't quite get there. But Wouldn't that be right. cool to see, though, if, the, if Thor think, is in, yeah. like, the arena? Oh, that would know? be awesome. And Just then, pops up in there. Rawr! Right, and he's like, and your opponent, and then out walks in the armor. Yeah. You know, everything the Hulk because Banner has decided this is where he belongs. How he got there, I hope they go into it. Or if that's if that's even what it is. I mean, this is all just fan speculation, man. Yeah, I mean, it, but still, it would that be so awesome. It would be exactly what we would love to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, okay. I... There I'm, you, I'm so pumped. There you go. Alright, so, um, last up on our list for this episode... Uh, it just uh, we're two episodes in Star Wars Rebels, yeah, season three. Mm-hmm. Uh, me being the big Star Wars fan, you just as large a Star Wars fan. I don't know. You you're a bigger Star Wars fan than me. I love it, but you love it. I I am. You know. Yeah. I I mean, my wife will. She she when I when I get on the Star Wars kick. Yeah. That's you know she's like oh, okay I'm going to the other room. Mm-hmm. I got a, I got a Chewbacca bobblehead. I've got. Um, a Jedi Interceptor, you know, Lego Jedi Interceptor. I got, a, you know, uh, a Clone Army um, Lego thing. I got all kinds of, you know, Star Wars I stuff. Almost, I almost bought you a lunchbox. We were at a consignment <laughs> sale up in Half Moon, and I wow. saw it. it was an R2-D2 lunchbox, but it wasn't in the best condition. Otherwise, you would have uh, you would have had it in your hands, my friend. Ooh, ooh. I would have added it to my collection. I, once I once I finish, you know, the, the studio here, and I can have shelves, and we're going to have... You know, we're going to have, like, movie posters. We're going to have the whole nine yards. So at some point, it mm-hmm. will be happening. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. But still, uh, season three, we're both caught up. I got to say, I'm pretty pumped about it. Mm-hmm. Ezra has kind of skewed towards the, uh, the, the dark side, which is really no big spoiler right. in that kind of way. I mean, they've kind of been hinting at that um, because if you remember – Season two's finale, Twilight of the Apprentice. Uh, we don't know what happened to Ahsoka. We, you know, it's it. We assume she's dead. We know Vader's still alive. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of fan speculation. No, she can't be dead. She's still alive. And then uh, Maul escaped, and Ezra uh, and Kanan, who was blinded, mm-hmm. uh, return back to the Rebel base with a Sith. Holocron mm-hmm. in hand. Ezra has the Holocron, 
and we start seeing him using it. Right. Learning more about the dark side. to gain Because he's using it to gain knowledge. He's using it to gain knowledge to defeat the Sith, while in turn it's basically slowly bringing, it's, it's, it's sending him down the dark path mm-hmm. of the Sith. Uh, so, I mean, we see that in, I mean, the first episode, we see him kind of using that uh, knowledge to get him and his friends out of a fix yeah. that they're in. Um, and even his friends are like, well, this is kind of different mm-hmm. because of what they've seen so far from Kanan and, and him in regards to using the Force and the Jedi training and, and all that kind of thing. Um, and then in Season 2, we see a little bit more of Ezra, the effects of what the Holocron is doing to Ezra. Uh, and basically, he almost he almost blows a mission, basically. Right. And it gets to be very tense in that regard, and you 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 know there's tension between uh, Ezra and Kanan in regards to you know well I mean basically Ezra feels that he's responsible for what happened to Kanan right. on Malachor mm-hmm. in regards to him being blinded yeah uh, but we also see that Kanan you know has has moved on from that he's he he never blamed Ezra in the first place. So there's that lack of communication. There's that rift between master and apprentice, mm-hmm. and that kind of also widens, uh, well, it, yeah, widens the, the 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 communications gap, but also pushes Ezra more towards the dark side and wanting to use the holocron, holocron to make up for what he feels he was wrong. He he was wrong in right. doing. Um, so I mean, and then and then Maul comes back, and and there's just and there's a lot more to to come. I mean, we're only two episodes in right. and there's a lot more information. And then we also, in episode one, we got to see Thrawn. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Grand Admiral Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn was in there and... Uh, He's going to be just awful. He's going to be... Evil. Go, oh, so bad. Evil. He's very... He's not a nice guy. No. No. Uh-huh. And, and I mean, do, do you feel... Based on what we've seen so far, he's they're they're portraying him like Timothy Zahn uh, wrote him in the Heir to the Empire. Well, the little bit that we got of him, I think so. I th- I, th- I think they're I'd off like on to a good see foot. More. Yeah, I definitely want to see more of that. I think that's going to be fantastic. And um, uh, I don't know. Do you watch the um, Do you watch the little uh, uh, Do you watch the short podcasts after the episodes are out? I have Rebels no. Recon. I have it. You should watch Rebels Recon. Andy Gutierrez, who is uh, the social media person for for Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. um, she does after every episode. It's a little ten minute video podcast on YouTube called Rebels Recon. Yeah, and she kind of dives into the, the the story a little bit, and she talks with some of the actors as well as some of the uh, you know the directors. Like uh, uh, you know, she she talks to Pablo Hidalgo, who yeah. is the story team guy. He's the basically the keeper. Of the timeline for Star Wars, uh, Dave Filoni, who's the executive producer and all that. Um, but I mean, we—I I learned something really interesting that uh, the difference between you know Tarkin and Thrawn. Tarkin is a political figure. Yes, he's governor, reg- a regional governor of the Outer Rims. Mm-hmm. Thrawn is more military. Somebody had asked, you know, who's who's the boss? They're both on equal footing. Yeah. But I think technically, Ma Tarkin would be would be more because he's civilian now. Yeah, I'm guessing he's civilian now. I don't see why you'd have a military um, person because if he's got a political title, well, he's um, if you uh, tar- the book Tarkin, um, I'm reading that now, which is it's pretty good. Um, you know, it kind of explores the background of him and everything, and he's uh, you know, he I th- believe that. You know, while he's a political figure and everything, he is within, um, he's in the emperors or the empires. Um, you know, he's in the military with them. And if you go back to Clone Wars, I mean, yeah, he he was he was a what was he then? I think, captain. I think he was a captain. Yeah. Yeah. I, when, when they went to you go know? rescue Master Peel from that right. from the Citadel and, prison, and he's not a, and he wasn't a fan of the Jedi or anything. No, like that. He, he, he no, he was know, not. You can kind of tell. You know, he's like one of those guys. Um, you know that has been not brought up through the ranks of being uh, like a soldier and stuff like that. Yeah. You know he was probably you know he went to a, an academy 
and he was you know brought in and he's an officer now and yeah. that's how he is he's you know he's a very smart man um very calculating um which you know to me it's even more of a the, the more you get background on him and everything the more it makes me wish that george lucas didn't didn't kill him kill him off in episode four for me yeah you know i would love yeah, to see that. more of him too i i i yeah i i i mean and i haven't read the tarkin book yet um i'm way behind in the books yeah um I mean, the last book I read was Kenobi, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think that's not even considered canon because it came out after the whole. I don't believe Kenobi is can- is canon. I was yeah. going to say canon. <laughs> Kenobi. Kenobi isn't canon. Kenobi, he's not Canadian. <laughs> he's not Canadian, eh? Okay. No. Nope. Okay, but if I'm... anything, he's English. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that? There's a whole English thing with Canada. I don't know. Let's go. Yeah. Um, British Columbia. British Columbia. Uh, but yeah, let's, um, I mean, I mean, but let, let's just say that, I mean, it, it's off to a good start. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm really excited to learn more. I guess we're going to see more, uh, uh, in regards to the Mandalorians with Sabine mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, I, I, I can't wait. I've just, I can't wait till the, you know, Saturday comes right. around. And, and then, in de- and then December, of course. Oh yeah. We'll get to see our next star Wars movie. Uh, oh yeah. Rogue, you know. Rogue one Rogue is one. due out. Hang on. Let me fire up the star Wars app. I can tell you exactly when it's happening because I actually, is it, let's see. Is it the 17th or Rogue, something? Rogue one comes out in 73 days, seven hours, seven minutes and 45 seconds. Oh geez. Well, what is the actual date of that? Uh, December, just uh, I think I want to say the fifteenth. Is it the fifteenth? It can't be seventy-three days. That's what this is from the official Star Wars app. Don't don't seventy-three days. It's really that. Do, oh, I guess we're at the beginning of October, do, so that does make yeah, sense. I was gonna say, do not mock. Yeah, you the know, official Star Wars. You're app. absolutely right. So that would put it there out at about the sixteenth. So I wasn't too far off. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, four hundred thirty-seven days till episode eight. Ooh. Uh, and then let's see the counter for Rebels. Still so damn Rogue long. One, and then Celebration 2017 in Orlando, where I would love to go this year. Uh, next year, I should say, in 2017, yeah. 191 days till Celebration 2017. Mm-hmm. So, the official Star Wars app. If you don't have it, you should get it. Get it. Um, I also like the uh, the weather because how's it doing on Tatooine? Uh, they don't tell you the weather on Tatooine. They tell you what your current weather is like. So we're Endor? So it's like Endor. 67 degrees is like Endor? 67 degrees. Oh, yeah, no, I'm Perfect sorry. Perfect Ewoking weather. I wasn't thinking of Endor. Yeah. I was thinking of um, Hoth. Hoth, yeah. Well, I'm sure that'll come up in, when December hits. Just a few months away from so, Hoth. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't have the official Star Wars app, you really should get yeah. it. It's really, it's really cool. It, it has emojis and soundboards and... and you could do the selfies and all that kind of stuff and get the official news feed from, from StarWars.com. It really is a really cool app. You should get it. I just I think the thing that I love the most about what we can see on Rebels and things like that is the fact that it explores more of the Star Wars universe. Yeah. You know, And it started with Clone Wars where you got to see more of these people that were Force-sensitive and Force users yep. and yep. everything. And now you have that. That continues on with this show. And it mm-hmm. continued into The Force Awakens with Miles Kanata and things yep. like that. Like, there are people that can feel it yep. that aren't the Sith, that aren't the Jedi. Right. You know? So, yeah, I, it's not I, I restricted it. to just those two groups anymore. Right. And the, and I mean, and all those little subtle Easter eggs that they throw into the show as well. Mm-hmm. Like, um, in uh, season, you know, in episode one of the season, they mention General Dodonna from episode four. He was the guy that gave the briefing before. The attack on the Death Star mm-hmm. at Yavin Five. So, yeah, that's. I mean, all those little things kind of just add up. I mean, they already had, they already had Leia on the show, Princess Leia on the show. They've had Lando Calrissian. Yeah. I mean, they. Now, have you seen all the things that says Rogue One ends basically like thirty seconds before Episode Four begins? Yeah, it's like you know, so, yeah, something like ten like, minutes or something right, like that. Like yeah. that that ends, and then Episode Four just picks picks it right, right up. up. Yep. So somewhere. So I mean, I, I guarantee you, a lot of people are probably gonna go see Rogue One and then come home and then jump right into Episode Four so they can just see, oh my god, and just god, keep, I would do keep that going. So that's hard. what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm not going to the midnight show. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to go to the Friday evening show. Okay. Um, just because, um. 
I got to work early on, on I, I work early at the day job on Fridays, so just it's just easier for me to basically, yeah. you know, just go to that. And I'll maybe I'll go to a late the late night show like the nine o'clock show or something like that. I'll probably end up after going, the baby goes to bed. I'll go on a. I, I like the Saturday morning after the major. I like going. Oh, you to like matinee. going to the matinee? I like the matinee. I I'm used to go to the matinee fan. all the time. Maybe that might be, actually be well. I don't know. Depends on the. Depends. We're family men now. Now we got to worry about babies. I know. So we may not be able to go yeah, to the matinee is, anymore. But this is the this is the whole thing is that Vera will use um, Logan as an excuse to not have to go. <laughs> To the ah, movie, she, oh, I she can't will. go. Somebody's got to watch the she baby. Will. Won't you just go with your brother? <laughs> Be careful. It's a double-edged sword. She I may also keep is. you home, right? Because you know she's like, right. I, 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 I really want to spend some time with you, and Logan would like to spend time with you, <laughs> right? It, it's gonna happen. No, it definitely will happen. I mean, it for happens sure. with me. But I mean, the, the tr- but I mean, Kim. When Kim tells me that kind of thing, it's like, yeah, you're actually kind of right because I've been working a lot. And she's like, she's like, BJ, come on, you gotta come home and say time, spend time with the baby. And then my response is, but I wanted to go to Tashi Station and pick up some power, power converters. converters. And then she smacks me and stops. Quit being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use that and see if I get smacked. <laughs> but I wanted to go to Tashi Tashi Station and pick up some power, power converters. converters. My I wife will look that. at me like, what? What are you talking about? I hate that line. Quit being a nerd, nerd. <laughs> quit, quit being a whiny bitch. <laughs> That's God. Look, shut up, Luke. Quit, quit being whiny. You know what's? I told you like when we went to Florida way back when uh, that they showed us um, uh, a free movie because we were so delayed, and it was The Force Awakens was what we got to watch Ooh. before it was released on video or anything like that. Oh wow! So you know we got to see it, and Vera hadn't gone to the theater and watched it, so she watched it on the plane with yep. me, and it ended. Like the plane landed, and I swear, like it was right as Ray and Chewie are flying away at the end to go and find Luke and go oh. on this map to Skywalker. Yeah. They land, okay, and all of a sudden the little bing. Oh, oh. Little, thanks for flying Southwest. And I said, Vera, you didn't get to see the end of it. So now we have it, and I had it on the other day. Skywalker's intense look. I know, I know. <laughs> Rude. Absolutely crazy. And oh. I said to her, I said, So do you feel better after? seeing the end of that and she was like i i still don't care <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> awesome Thank well you. you gotta know well hey at least you know she loves you that's all that matters i know i know yeah. but you know i think she liked this one a lot more i think she liked this star wars better than any of the other star wars that i've shown her okay you know? that's good i mean it's a start it is it, and it, i think that was i think that's the, you know that was their game plan making this one yeah Get the new fans. Get the new fans, and my and my wife. Because we don't awesome. matter anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> our money, our money is no good to them. I know. Oh well. Um, all right, but that, that I mean, I think that pretty much right. I think we've said everything we yeah. have to say this it's, time around. We're just. It's good to be back. Sweet Christmas. It's good to be back. Oh yes, we're back, and uh, <laughs> this is our first attempt at, vi- at live streaming the recording session on our Facebook yeah. page. Those uh, of, by the way, I just want to add in those of you who are fans of Luke Cage and are going to watch it, just look for all of the Easter eggs that they lay in there from the classic comics to like the colors that they use and the things that he's wearing and everything like that. Ooh, okay. You know, like his Power Man has like, you know, the he headband wears, and the yellow shirt. Right. And all so that. They, it's very subtle that they do that though. Yeah. You know, like he's got a uh, he's got a hoodie on, mm-hmm. a black hoodie with yellow lining. So he's wearing it, and he looks like Power Man. You know what I mean? Oh. It's very, but it's very subtle and everything like that. Just, you know, look out for the Easter eggs. These guys did a really good job. They did their homework. Watch the show. Tell yeah. us what you think. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah. And, and, and please go to the, go to the, go to the website or uh, go to our Facebook page uh, where this video is and just and tell us more of what you think about it, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, remember the website xjockalbanyny.com that's where you can uh, catch these episodes you can download them uh, also we're starting to do the live stream here and mm-hmm. uh, starting with the next episode we record hopefully we'll be able to start putting up some YouTube video with mm. that because uh, I forgot to hit the record button <laughs> for that so there you that's go right. uh, you can also listen to us of course uh, get the podcast at uh, you know in iTunes on the i uh, on the iTunes store, there's also uh, TuneIn Radio, there's uh, Stitcher Radio, there's Podcast P, there's all these, or Blueberry yeah. Podcast. Right, we're all over the joints. So. Use the force and you'll find Use us. Use the force and you will find us. All right, till next time, stay geeky.